I'm your host, Rebecca Martell, and I want to welcome you to Showcase Wedding. I remember when I was a new bride and the never-ending to-do list I had. I want to help you get through that by interviewing experts in the wedding industry. this episode, I want to take you out to Quebec City, where we will be visiting the Hotel Chateau Laurier. I'm Ola Frangerard, General Manager at the Hotel Chateau Laurier Quebec and Georges V Catering Services. I'm the third generation of a family-owned business in Quebec City. Hotel Chateau Laurier Québec is located in the heart of Quebec City. Sitting at the corner of Grand Valley Street and Place Georges V, with plenty of restaurants and a vibrant nightlife. Hotel Chateau Laurier is in the center of one of the most beautiful cities in North America. With a large European influence, Quebec City is a focal point of French culture. Quebec City is known for its comfort foods. Their poutine, French onion soups, and crepes will all have you craving your next meal. Our team of wedding coordinators can guide you every step of the way to make sure that your wedding is everything you ever dreamed of. In our various reception halls, we can accommodate any size of wedding, anywhere from 20 to 300 guests. One of our key features is our inner courtyard, the perfect location for a classic outdoor ceremony. The Winter Carnival, Summer Music Festival, and St. Jean Baptiste are famous celebrations that attract people from all over the world to come honor our country. Chateau Laurier Quebec treats every newlywed couple with a complimentary, luxurious room for their special night. Taking a trip to Quebec City will really give you a taste of our rich Canadian heritage. Have you ever wondered how a customized wedding ring is made? Well, Exorum Jewelers is going to show us how. I'm here in the heart of downtown Montreal where I'm going to go meet Gino, the owner of Exorum Jewelers. Gino, nice to meet you. Your showroom is beautiful and you have so many nice pieces here. But if I wanted to get a customized piece, how would I go about getting that? Well, we would start with the four C's. The color, clarity, cut, and carat weight. This makes up 90% of the value of the diamond. And once we've chosen a, a diamond, we would look at the different styles. Solitaire, halos, there are many different styles to choose from. People think that customizing a ring is very complicated and expensive, but it really isn't. From there, we would take the ring that you've chosen or that we've chosen together and bring it to our designers. Using a computer software, they make a 3D version of the ring that contains all of the characteristics the newly engaged couple has chosen. The style, the cut, the carrot of the diamonds, and their placement on the ring. The finalized ring design is then saved and sent to a 3D printer. Once it's perfect, they would give it to a caster where we would choose the material. It then prints a ring layer by layer out of a special wax that'll help the bride visualize her custom piece on her own finger. Platinum, gold, 
And once that is chosen and it's casted, we give it to our jewelers that would make the final touches. The jewelers grind the hard edges off the ring from the molding process. The metal is then buffed on a polishing wheel to give it its shiny finish. After a thorough cleaning and a protective coating, the jewelers inspect the ring to make sure it's perfect for the diamonds. Give it to our setters that would set the diamonds, then have it evaluated. So once the ring is certified, the process is complete and ready for you to take home. Real diamonds glow under UV light. It provides a reasonably reliable way to find out if your diamond is fake. I'm here today at Bride Lane where I get to show you the abundance of choices that you have. Let's go try some of the most popular styles you can choose from. So our first model gets to show you the classic princess look. This dress has a tulle skirt, a beautiful beaded bodice, and that sweetheart neckline. If you wanted to have a more fuller effect, you can use that crinoline underneath. You know that this dress will never go out of style. So our next dress is the traditional A-line. This is a perfect choice for any of the shorter brides out there because it can really elongate the body. Notice the beautiful belt. It's one of many accessories, including headpieces and veils, that can really complete your look. Our next dress is absolutely perfect for that destination wedding. Informals are a great choice for a simple wedding, a getaway wedding, or something that's smaller. Don't think that you have to go with just white. Like many of the dresses here, you can choose up to 100 different colors. Just imagine your feet in the grass or your toes in the sand. Now for a quick quiz. Can you guess how much the most expensive diamond was sold for? We'll give you the answer after we get some hair and makeup tips from Neelam Style. I'm here today with the Mughal sisters. I have Neelam and Danam. Thank you for having us. So you're the team of Neelam Style, and today you're going to be giving me a few beauty tips. Yes, I'll be sharing helpful tips on hair, and Anam will be sharing tips on makeup. Oh, wonderful. Well, let's get started. What is the biggest trend women are looking for right now? Uh, one big trend is having fuller brows. So I'll use this medium brown uh, brow pencil on you, and this really helps. Just a few strokes really helps define the brow. Just filling it in makes a huge difference. And why are you using a pencil as opposed to a brush? And um, uh, this powder. is really quick and easy. You can use definitely gels, you can use fiber mascaras. I find this is really quick and easy for every day. Someone with darker hair will go for a dark brown, blondes will go for more blonder tones. So if you can take a look at your two eyebrows, you yes. can see how it's defined. So that can make a difference. Now speaking about defining, we're hearing about contouring all over the place. That's something that can help define the face. Can you give me some tips on that? Yes, of course. So this is a cream? Yes. Now how do I start off with so contouring? You just go below the cheekbone. So you want to lift the cheekbone. And I always like to go around the temple, around the jawline, and then we just blend it out. So again, you have to kind of know your face. Yes. And blend, 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 I hear, yes. is the key for all makeup yes, artists. Definitely. So I'm going to grab my highlighting kit. And now we can highlight with a cream product. So First. you use cream again? Yes. So we're going to do cream highlight. Where do I put my highlights? Right over here and around the temple. Temple and cheekbone brings yes. everything forward. Yes. So it's all blending. I love to use my fingers. It really brings the heat to help melt the product. And then just using the powder, two different tones. And you can see that glow right away. There you go. Wonderful. Great tips, thank you very much for sharing with me. Thank you. So now that I'm all glammed up, it's time for me to talk about hair. Yes, Rebecca, I'll be showing you a quick hairstyle for those people who are attending the wedding. Someone can try that hairstyle at home and you could do it yourself. Okay. 
What's one of the first things that a bride should do when she's trying to figure out her style for the wedding day? Uh, she should first of all take an appointment, get a trial done. Now what's a trial? A uh, trial is something that where the bride-to-be goes and tries out different hairstyles. She brings in pictures, she brings in uh, her accessories. Oh, like she, her veil or exactly, flowers? Exactly, exactly. And she tries on different hairstyles to see how she would feel confident the day of. So then tell me, once the bride has uh, shown up for the big day, do you have any tips for her? Uh, she should wear a loose shirt when she comes in to get her hairstyle done because when she has to get in and out of the dress, she wouldn't ruin the hair. One less thing to worry about. I always recommend the brides uh, to bring a little bag with them with a little hairspray, a travel size hairspray, a few bobby pins like this. If you're dancing a lot, if your hair strand falls out, at least you will be able to pin it back. Oh, so you maybe give that to the bridesmaid, exactly. someone that can help out with the hairpins, hairspray. Yes. Yes, and um, the hairstyle that I'm doing is very easy. You could totally uh, do this at home by yourself. It's very popular. It's like a loose romantic curls because your hair is already curled up. So it's easy to just turn it around the fingers and just like flare it a bit. And then you just have to take a little bobby pin and just hide the pin underneath like so. And then all you need is just a little bit of hairspray. And the bun is pretty much done. You can also put some volume if you want to. You can even make it a braid if you want to. But what I like on you is something like this. So you can incorporate a lot of different te exactly. textures, styles. This is the hairstyle that I did. You could just turn around and show it to the audience. A little bit of hairspray, that's it. That's all you need and you're ready. Beautiful. So now I have my complete look. That's right. Neelam Styles helped me out. Thank you very much Thank to you, you and so your sister. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So as you can see, even a little hair and makeup can make a big difference. Hopefully these tips were helpful to you. Now we can move on to the next thing on our list. Before we asked you, the 59.6 carat pink diamond set a new world record at the auction when it was sold for $71.2 million in 2017. I'm out in La Samsung, Quebec, visiting the old Oasis Courthouse, a beautiful historic wedding venue. Let's go inside. Today I'm out here in the old courthouse of L'Assomption. I get to speak with Mac Antoine. He's the cultural agent here. Bonjour. Bonjour. You're going to tell us a little bit about the history of this beautiful locale and the town surrounding it. Dans la partie centrale où on est présentement, c'est la partie la plus récente qui a été construite en 1832. Euh, au tout début, il y avait un magasin labé. Puis c'est grâce au labé de L'Assomption, c'est la ceinture fléchée, elle existe. Euh, donc, euh, c'est ici le berceau de la ceinture fléchée. So here on location, there are two places the bride and groom can get married. Tell me about those two places. Euh, oui, exactement. Il y a deux places où les gens peuvent se marier. Dans la cour de justice euh, au deuxième étage euh, ou dans la terrasse en arrière où il y a la gloriette, dans le jardin français. Euh, en général, les gens préfèrent se marier à l'extérieur dans la belle terrasse. So with the amount of history that's in this location, share with me the type of weddings that you've already had. Euh, oui, il y a eu plusieurs sortes de mariages ici, dont euh, médiéval, Nouvelle-France, euh, gothico-victorien euh, et classique, évidemment. So we saw some beautiful outfits in the front uh, entrance. Was it you that made them? C'est une costumière euh, de la ville qui a fabriqué euh, ses habits euh, euh, pour un tournage, mais euh, à, à vent, et à loup des, des habits, euh, que ce soit pour des mariages ou autres événements. Thank you, Mac Antoine, for sharing with me the rich history and culture of this beautiful venue. Bienvenue, ça a été un honneur de vous recevoir. Merci beaucoup.
Next up, we get the party started with Mixed Jockey Productions. I'm here with award-winning host Adam Reed from Mixed Jockey Productions. Hey. So you're going to be sharing with us everything we need to know about the music, the DJ, the host, and the party that's going to be going on at the wedding? I'm not sure about everything, but I promise you you'll walk out of here more educated in terms of the wedding scene. I can tell you that much. So let's start at the beginning. When a bride and groom come to see you, what is it that they need to know? So first and foremost, as soon as he proposes, get on the phone and, and start making some calls because the earlier you can get a head up uh, and a head start on planning your wedding, the better it is, right? Okay. Uh, there's a lot of planning that goes into a wedding and you wanna be equipped with the right team uh, to be able to support you because ultimately, who you're gonna work with, it's a partnership, right? You wanna work with the right people who are going to support you and travel with you as you come to uh, your most memorable day which of your life, yeah. which will be your wedding. Second thing I would say is make sure you understand your crowd uh, relatively quickly. Then it starts to say, well, what kind of people do I want to be working with with the crowd that I have in mind? And that's really important because if you don't know the sort of clientele or sort of guest list that you're going to have, it becomes incredibly difficult for the people who are entertaining them to satisfy that to demand. Get the right, right, exactly, there. exactly. What's the most important thing you can tell them to have the best experience? The most important part of a wedding in 2017, 2018 and beyond uh, is the party. You have to throw a good party and you have to have a host that can drive the party, that can drive the event and make sure it's not too long. Um, but ultimately the party is the most important because the party is what generates a great time. So invest in the party, invest in the entertainment company you're gonna hire, invest in the host that's going to be on the mic, that's going to be engaging your crowd, that's gonna understand your story and also a team of people that will understand who's in the room and then be able to provide a party that will be you know, spoken about for, for years to come. So not just music, what else have you seen change over the years? Photo booths. I remember uh, just having a, a old school Polaroid on the table, and this was like oh, five yeah, years ago, so, yeah, where people yeah. would take pictures, then they would hang them up on the wall. Then we went through this whole phase of photo booths, and then they went back to the Polaroids because everybody had photo booths, but now we're back on the photo booths because we now have the capability of, social, of uh, sharing our pictures on social networks right, in real time. Right, right. So you can hashtag uh, costumes, uh, designs, glasses, uh, branded content. There's so much to do with photo booth, and that's probably Probably the one thing I've noticed across the board that is at almost every single wedding uh, that we work and that we do. And another thing that I've changed, uh, that I've seen change, is the pacing. There was this time where speeches were really important, where you know the father would take the, the mic and the mother would take it, and then the in-law side and the other side. Everybody's crying. Everybody's crying, but at the same time, everybody's sort of you know waiting to eat their food and saying, "Come on, let's get this party going." So that's changed. It's more quality now, not quantity. People are speaking from the heart. It's, 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 they're actually being told how much time they have now, which oh. is something brand new. Uh, and they tend to respect that. So it's in between anywhere between five to seven minutes is something that we would suggest is a relatively good amount of time to engage a crowd and address 200 people in a hall. Um, and after that, it's really just all about the party, party favors, music selection, getting creative, mashups. That's a huge thing right now that they're mashing up 1980 songs with 1990 beats. Yeah. So there is so much to do. And that is, is, you know, now that I think about it, it's one of the things that people need to do more. They need to work with a team that's going to think outside the box rather than play the shoe game and have their first the course and the toes and the YMCA. Yeah, yeah the YMCA <laughs> is a big one. Nice call on that one. And, and also on a final note, uh, VR. Uh, it's coming. VR? VR, virtual reality. Oh, really? It's coming and we're, wedding. yeah, yeah. So you heard it here first. Okay. There's some really, really cool AR and VR that's coming for weddings. Augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, options for brides and grooms. And maybe, maybe I can come back and talk to you guys about that for sure. We'll It'll be a lot of fun. For that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Advice. Thanks Hope for, uh, thanks for having me. Hopefully all this information will help you plan the party that your guest will never forget. Today I'm out at Rideau Pines Farm. We're not far from Ottawa, Ontario. I'm gonna be meeting up with Tyler and his team and we're gonna try some of his delicious food from the Smoke Shack. We're out here today at Rideau Pines Farm and Market. We've got the Smoke Shack and Tyler here today. 
what is it we're going to be doing? So we got everything set up for you today at Arito Pines, just a lovely little wedding venue just outside of Ottawa. We have our food truck, we have our smoker, uh, we have a nice little table set up. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to provide you guys with a little appetizer, some food, and then um, just see, give you an idea to see what the ambiance is that, that we can provide to you. So you're going to show me what it is you can do for the bride, what it is you uh, bring down, what you supply. Exactly. Um, I'll give you a little rundown of what we traditionally do for the planning and the organizing of the wedding. What we like to do is we like to bring the bride and groom into the restaurant, give them a little taste of everything that we have to offer. Um, all our meats that we offer are all smoked. Uh, we have a bunch of delicious sides that we can offer to you. Um, so we bring you in, let you decide a few of the meats that you want to choose, a few of the sides, and then we can bring that to, to wherever you've chosen your venue, the wedding venue. Perfect. So besides the food and the amenities, you've got a liquor license, the party going all night. Yeah, so we can bring our liquor license with you, which just saves you a lot of um, a lot of planning, really. You don't have to deal with the bureau at all. We can bring that with us, and then we can provide you with wines, different wines, any local brew that you're interested in, some bows, love tread. We've got Ashton Brewing Company, Beyond the Pale, pretty much anybody, anybody, any kind of beer that you're interested in, we can provide to you. Perfect. Yeah. On top of that as well, we also have, a, we can do a late night menu for you. We can do a buffet, we can do mac and cheese, we can do a little pulled pork sliders, whatever, whatever you guys are interested in. Mm, I'm interested in trying. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get to that shortly. So hi, I'm Chef Adam Kelly from The Smoke Shack. And uh, what we're gonna have is some excellent Jamaican jerk chicken uh, made with our in-house jerk sauce. And then we also have our Red Blacks ribs, uh, great pork side rib that comes with our honey chipotle sauce. Again, made in-house, we really pride ourselves on making our own sauces. And uh, some pulled pork that again has a Memphis red, kind of more vinegary based uh, Carolina barbecue sauce for our pulled pork. And then finally we have some wonderful 12 hour smoked brisket with a smoky onion coffee barbecue sauce. And we're able to smoke right here on site, which is I think a fantastic finished product for bride, groom, or any event that you're gonna be hosting. Perfect, so Tyler, we're all set up here at this gorgeous table. Please tell me who did all the setup. So Marianne down at Heirloom Events was nice enough to provide us with all this beautiful stuff here on the table. Um, she's located in and around the Ottawa area. It gives you that beautiful rustic wedding feel yes, right on location. Right. Gorgeous job. And Chef Adam has put out all this food for us. Tell me what it is. So what he's brought out for us is we started with a little bit of appetizers. We have some jerk chicken egg rolls here. We could also do some um, andouille sausage skewers. We can do some sliders for you. Uh, going over to this, this is the main event, the attraction. We got our St. Louis style uh, side cut ribs, we got our pulled pork, our brisket, and then we got our jerk chicken over here. Then just in front right here, we have uh, some vegetables that were picked probably 45 minutes ago, just in the Rito Pines farm behind us. Right here, yeah. Yeah, right here. And then we have our uh, our famous mac and cheese. Everything looks delicious. I can't wait to try it. Pretty tasty. <laughs> Did you know? Queen Victoria pioneered the white satin wedding dress. Since white dresses were so hard to clean, it could only be worn once, a luxury only the wealthy could afford. Next, we're gonna get a history lesson with Roxanne Crane out at the Canadian Museum of History. I'm here with Roxanne Crane, sales executive at the Canadian War Museum and the Canadian Museum of History. She's gonna share with us today what having your wedding at a museum is all about. Thank you so much, Rebecca, and thank you for coming to visit our museum. This place is absolutely beautiful. What room are we in right now? We're in our magnificent Grand Hall. It's our signature venue at the museum and also our largest venue here. So there could be weddings right here, Absolutely. Right with all these beautiful totem poles. Yes, you're actually in an actual exhibit. So if you want to offer something really unique to your guests, this is probably one of the most unique places you can actually host a wedding. I would assume, yeah, yeah. having a wedding in a museum, um, people that have their family from abroad coming here, they actually get to visit all of Canada being in one place. Exactly. Right now, the Grand Hall showcases all the Aboriginal groups of the West Coast, but we have other exhibits that basically speak of the history of Canada from you know the beginning of the first groups that came here all the way to the most recent um, factual what's happening today in Canada. So 
So Roxanne, can you give us a little history on the Canadian Museum of History? Um, this museum opened in 1989. Uh, it was opened under its original name, the Canadian Museum of Civilization. People still think of us as a Canadian Museum of Civilization. In 2014, it was changed to the Canadian Museum of History because we wanted to put an emphasis more on the history of Canada. I recognize a statue that's behind you. Where where would I have seen that? Uh, this statue behind me, it's called the Haida Gwaii Salon. Uh, there's also the original model is in Victoria, BC. This is an actual model right here, but uh, people might recognize it as being the on the old $20 bills. And we actually have a boat outside, which is a tugboat. People my age can remember before the loonies, the $1 bill. There was a tugboat on, on the $1 bill, and that's actual tugboat that's from the $1 bills. So, so little gems hidden all over. Yes, a lot, of, a lot of Canadian history right here at the History Museum. So there's a lot of exhibits here in the museum that are stationed all the time. We call them permanent exhibits, that's correct. And then you have others that change out. Yes, we have temporary exhibits that, um, that are more current, that we can have traveling exhibits from, from other countries. We also have uh, more exhibits that can be a bit more fun. For example, we had a hockey exhibit this past year. Uh, we that's do have, Canadian. yeah, we have uh, uh, an exhibit right now, Hot Wheels, where I have an upcoming exhibit on DreamWorks and the exhibits change, so they always can come and visit something new at the museum. Always something to see that you haven't always seen before. New. Yes, yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. I've had some interesting love stories. Um, I always, curious to find out why people choose a museum. Some people decide to get married here because um, they had their first date here. One particular couple comes to mind where they were in high school and they had a, uh, a visit and they had it shared their first kiss here. Some people had their graduation here where they started dating. So a lot of these fun stories, they decide to continue their love story here at the museum. So I think that's kind of cute. That's wonderful. So yes. not a location that all brides and grooms would think of, yeah. But perhaps after this, it's something that you might think of for your next event. Again, I'm your host, Rebecca Martell, and I want to thank you for watching this episode of Showcase Wedding. To any of the newly engaged bride and grooms out there, we want to wish you felicitations, congratulations, mazel tov.